my goodness! Holy sh! Yep, drilling holes in a tire. I'm on something new and revolutionary, methinks. See, first off, you're losing a little weight, making the tire lighter, but that's pretty marginal. What I am gaining is more biting edges. More importantly, because you know, you're thinking to yourself, well, how are you going to hold air in it with these holes in it? Excuse me. Um, I'm going to add a central tire inflation system and by pumping a continuous stream of compressed air into this tire it will keep it inflated and granted there's going to be massive air loss through all these holes because you know, I'm going to do the whole tire with these but if I can pump enough air in there it'll stay inflated but more importantly what it will do is all this compressed air that's coming out of these holes will keep the keep the tire clean, keep any mud and debris blown off the tire, and it will create a hover effect for the vehicle. This is what I'm really doing right here. Got two of them done. Thought I was going to have three, but as you notice, once I get the nuts on there, I weld them. And earlier today, I was hoping to get the third one done, but uh, yeah, I ran out of welding wire. So I thought I'd just well go ahead and start tackling the fourth one. Get the holes drilled and put the bolts in. I don't have quite enough bolts to finish it, but yeah, I gotta go to town tomorrow and get welding wire and get some bolts too. Uh, let's see. Using a 5 8 inch bit, um, for bolts, this particular tire is a, what are they, 38.5 or, yeah, 38.5, 1450 by 15 uh, Thornbird, which any of you in the wheeling world know, Thornbirds are a joke of a tire. They sure look aggressive, but they're not that great. So yeah, I've hopefully found a good use for these. Um, each one of these tires, in this size, I'll be putting 144 bolts in it. Um, because the tread is, seems to be thicker on these, um, I get two bolts on the outer edge of these, but the inner lugs, I'm managing to get three. I'm not sure if that's going to be a good thing or not. Uh, you, you would think the taller bolts would be... Ooh, I missed a weld on that one. Uh, you'd think the taller bolts... Would be better for traction in theory they would be but uh you can take your hand and i don't know if it's going to show up on the camera but yeah you can you can actually push them over a little bit and i'm afraid yeah once you get the weight of a vehicle on and then under real world wheeling circumstances that the might just fold that bolt over with the extra leverage of the one extra nut uh, we'll try them out, hopefully this next weekend, if I get them done by then. And I'll have to keep an eye on them. It looks like they're getting folded over pretty badly. I might just have to take them off, put something else on, and then bring them home and maybe, yeah, cut the one nut off of each of these and take them all down to two. Uh, I'm also concerned, yeah, if it does start folding them over, more so than you know, just folding them over, it, it might actually leverage the bolt clear out of the tire. Um, you know, you'd think this would be a great idea for an old set of almost worn out tires, but uh, I think you'd be better off with a set of tires. I mean, I'm no expert. This is the first time I've done it. But yeah, but what I was talking about, how the these bolts can be, you know, moved with your finger. I think it would be stronger putting them on a, a tire that had a lot of tread left in it with that lug would help support it some more. What the hell's that cat doing? 
Um, plus, you know, initially I went into this thinking, I mean, I knew, I knew this wasn't going to be free, but oh my God, the, I've got, the tires were the cheapest. I think I paid 50 bucks for these tires from a friend about a year ago with the thought of doing this to them. And that was by far the cheapest part of this project. I've got damn near a thousand dollars in these with all these bolts. Um, I did buy beadlock rings. I thought, yeah, I don't, uh, because I, I bought the beadlocks because I want to run these at a low pressure, which is better for wheeling, but also I'm wondering how much of the tire carcass strength I've compromised by drilling all these holes in it. So therefore I don't want to put a lot of pressure in it. So I'm gonna want to run low single digit pressure in order to hopefully keep the tire from ripping apart. Um, so yeah, for that, I need to run a bead lock. You don't have to, but I think it'd be a good idea under these circumstances because I think these are gonna have really good traction. Um, I've seen where some rock bouncers have done this. This is real popular for people that do ice racing. Um, but it, I, I just have to wonder why more people don't do this. And like the rock bouncers that have done it, well, why hasn't it become a thing? There, there must be a, a downfall to it. And uh, that's what I'm wondering if, and uh, yeah, I'm wondering if, yeah, it's going to compromise the strength of the tire carcass itself. Maybe they don't last. Maybe the tire goes kerblooey after a while. I don't know. Uh, another bad thing is these thorn birds were already heavy as it was and adding all these bolts to it. Wow. This, these things are just insanely heavy. Uh, those steel rims, yeah, those were heavy. Uh, I did kind of cheap out on the the bead locks. They came from, let's see, where'd the box go? Total Metal Innovations. Um, they were only a couple bucks more than some other people that sell bead locks. And plus they had a huge supply, or sorry, not supply, a huge uh, selection of different patterns for your outer bead lock ring. Um, uh, they have an anti-coning inner ring. Let's see, I, got, I think we got a rim back here that might, or you got welded up that might show it. There we go. These tabs here were flat when you weld them on, and then you take a crescent wrench, bend them up 90 degrees, weld them. Uh, they call these drainage holes, which that would... Sure, they drain if you're, you know, wheeling in water. Uh, here in the Midwest, that's not going to drain the kind of mud we play in. Uh, but, you know, it's it's a nice feature, I guess. Couldn't hurt. Uh, the anti-coning is kind of interesting. But, yeah, there's only a couple bucks more. And like I said, the, the selection of different outer rings they have was just, just fantastic. But I've found so far with the other three, like these outer lugs, I can't go drilling them off this way. You need to stay this way because of the curvature of the carcass of the tire. You, know, you get too far out here and you run into that curve and you need a lot longer bolt. Maybe that's probably a contributing factor why I can only get two nuts on these outer ones too as well. But yeah, just like any other tire, it seems like the, especially mud tires, seems like they always wear out in the center first and there's always some lugs left on the shoulder. Uh, I thought just to keep things interesting, I was going to try to keep track of how much time it took me to do one tire. One tire wheel and rim and everything. So I'm going to get back to drilling. Okay, she's all drilled. It took me from 9.20 to 9.48 to drill all these holes. Unfortunately, I'm not done drilling yet. I used the 5 8 bit because it seems to be sharper and doesn't want to walk around as much as, uh, I don't know what this other size bit is. It's a little bit bigger than 5 8 5 8 will work, but it, yeah, with this little bit bigger bit, I don't know, I think the markings have already been chewed off of it. Uh, it doesn't matter. But yeah, the, the bit on that, it's not as sharp, and it wants to walk around a lot. So I used the 5 8 to do the initial hole, then I hog it out with this one. So yeah, it took me 28, yeah, 28 minutes to drill all those holes. Uh, stopped and rocked a piss. Now I'm going to switch out the drill bit and run the holes out bigger. Alright, 
cut them bored out. Made a little bit of mess. Uh, took about another 15 minutes to do those. Okay, I got our setter up on a bench here. What I found out with these other three, you want to get comfortable doing this because this is not an easy job. It's not terribly difficult either, but the, yeah, the first one, like, I did it crouched down like this on the ground and pushing the bolts up through. Yeah, that got old real fast. Get comfortable. Get it up to a level. I guess ergonomics would be the big fancy pants word. Um, I'm using half inch carriage bolts. There we go. Um, it just made sense to me to use these with the round head. That way you didn't have to put some sort of a liner between the tube and the bolt head. With it being smooth like that. Um, what I do... Um, what I'm doing first though... I'll grind the... Uh, I don't think this is a zinc plating. I think that's just paint. These are supposedly grade 8's I ordered online. So it's cheaper than buying them in the hardware store. Anyway, I'll stop every so often and you know grind that paint off of there. Because it makes the welding go a lot easier. It doesn't, whatever this plating is on these nuts, it seems to weld not too bad. There's a little bit of spattering, but yeah, it's not worth the effort to, to grind that clean, but it definitely is for these. But uh, what I'll do, what I found easiest is to, let me back up so you can see the table. I'll start in this corner over here. That way, I, Luckily, I'm tall, I got long arms, I can reach inside the tire and I'll... I get a big washer like this that fits over the square shank. Well, of the carriage bolt, like so. And what I can do, it's probably not going to show up, but I'll get in there and I can feel around and get the bolt started in the hole grab the head, thread it in a little bit, and then what I'll do is I'll, it does go in kind of hard, I'll get this hammer, and I can work this corner of the tire here and still reach in there fairly comfortably and just pound the bolt through with the hammer like that. That's the bottom row here. And then I'll just, I'll get about five or six of them in run them down with the washers on the outside nuts, double nut them, spin the tire, do five more, and do this whole bottom row. Then I'll move them and do this row. And these two rows are easier. You don't have to pound them in. You can just push them through. It takes a little effort, but they do push through. Yeah, then I'll do this row, flip the tire over, and then this will be the bottom row again where I have to, you know, work a little corner that's comfortable, hammer them in, and then do that, this row. So maybe I can find a way to hold the camera and show you. Okay, I got one done already. Basically that's what it's going to look like before you get anything on the outside. The second one in there, it's started, like I said. It's not showing very well. Once you get the end of it kind of in the hole, turn the head, get it turned in a couple threads. And I don't know of a good way I can do this, but let's see if I can get the camera set up here. Hey Steve! There it be. I know it doesn't look like it's sticking through very much, and it isn't. Yeah. I've found every once in a while I'll run into one that doesn't want to come through very far. Like I can't get a washer and a nut on it. This one might just do it. Yeah, that will. But yeah, occasionally you'll get one where the, the bolt won't quite stick through far enough. You can get a, you can just get a nut started on it, and then what I'll do is I'll run it down to the impact, and that'll help pull the bolt through. I mean, I'll, I'll run a nut down without a washer. Obviously, the nut wants to sink into the tire, so you don't want to get too crazy doing that. Otherwise, the nut can sink in far enough that you, the socket falls off and you can't grab it again. But yeah, I can, I can get the nut on there enough to, to pull the bolt through enough that I can get a washer on it and a nut then. There's only been one so far I actually had to, to grind the lug down enough to get, get the thing to grab. Okay, got six of them there started. Washer and a nut on each one, just put on there. And I'll use my old handy dandy DeWalt. Run them down. So I can 
get two on there about. Nice thing about these is that's the one that wasn't sticking through very far. A little more. Yeah, yeah sorry about my crappy camera work. Alright, you can see there you can get two nuts on there. Okay now I got the two nuts on there. What I'll do is I'll I'll take the impact, put it on the outer nut, put a wrench on there, give it a quick zap where it just locks them down. Come on, focus, not that it needs to be, but yeah, you get the idea. Obviously I need two hands to do this, so I won't be able to film it and show you how. Okay, got the bottom road done. That took forever, but I was stopping every so often to clean up the bolts. I wouldn't wait till I'd run out. I just, you know, my hand cramps up pretty quick holding on to those bolts when I'm grinding them. So yeah, I'd do 15 or 20 at a time. And yeah, I wouldn't wait till I run out. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of ahead at this point, but just wanted to show you, uh, once you get to this, on these tires anyway, once I get to this middle row, things do go a lot quicker because, because it's up higher, you've got more room to work. This, when you're working on this row, or for me anyway, comfortably, I can only get maybe five or six of these. In the second row, because I can push them in with my fingers and yeah, I don't have to lean on there with a hammer, I can, I can go all the way around here and get maybe 10 or 12 or so at a time. Let's see if I can get on that and show you. Yeah, there it is. And she pushes right through. Okay, that's all I can do for tonight. It took me two hours and five minutes to get almost all of these bolts in. I ran out of bolts, like I mentioned earlier. I need 26 more, and also going to need a few more nuts too. But yeah, a little over two hours to do all that, and ain't even done. Um, out of welding wire too, as I already mentioned, or I could, yeah. You know, weld all those plus this this one needs a little this is where my wire ran out earlier today and you can do some that so i can't even weld up the last bead lock because that's going to factor into the time too okay got the last 26 bolts yesterday got them put in this morning after i got off work i don't know if you can hear me it's raining and i'm in a metal shed so that's why i'm talking kind of loud Took me another 30 minutes to get those last 26 in, just couldn't seem to find my groove. Kind of working against the clock here too. Like I said, it's raining. Yeah, whenever it rains hard, my inside of my shed becomes a swamp. Uh, I'm gonna weld all these up now. I think so far my total time is, well, I don't know. I know to get all the bolts in, it was two hours and 35 minutes. I'm going to get after welding these, and then uh, I'll probably quit for the morning, go to bed, and then uh, get the tires mounted up on the uh, wheels later this afternoon. All right, they're all welded up. Took me 50 minutes to do all 144 of these. And that was frequent breaks to stand up and rest my back instead of being hunched over on all those. I didn't try to do a great fabulous looking weld on them because it doesn't matter they wouldn't stay good looking anyway basically all I was trying to do is just booger the threads together to where the nuts wouldn't come off um, had a fan going try to keep enough yeah I don't know what kind of coatings these are exactly probably, I'm sure it's not good to be breathing it but yeah I had the fan going but I wasn't didn't have it blown directly on me so I didn't want it blowing my shielding gas away but yeah, I can still smell the stuff, so who knows how many years that took off my life. Uh, I had, did it on this piece of old plywood. I didn't want to do it on the dirt floor, because I figured the, uh, well, no figuring about it, I guarantee it would have, but uh, the bolts that hadn't been welded yet would have got a bunch of dirt embedded in them, and yeah, that wouldn't help the welding either. But yeah, 50 minutes there, so all four tires are have the bolts welded up. The only welding I have left to do is to put the bead lock on that wheel, and I think I'll go ahead and do that before I call it for the morning. 
Okay, yesterday I went ahead and drilled out the new hole that I'm going to need for the valve stem. Got to weld that one up. Um, I'm sure anybody that's been welding for a while already knows this trick. But uh, to weld up a hole, you get you a piece of brass or copper and back up that hole. And yeah, the weld, it, it might stick to that copper, but you can easily just break it off. It won't actually really penetrate it. So yeah, then you can just fill that hole in. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that uh, I cheaped out when I ordered these beadlock rings. I just stayed with the basic 3 16 thickness. They had an option to go quarter inch, but I didn't. I figured, I mean, that, I'm sure that rig probably weighs more than I think it does. But yeah, if I were, you know, running a, some big heavy bastard with a big block and rock wells or one tons with huge 49 inch tires, I probably would have optioned for the quarter inch, but yeah. I, I figured for what I'm doing here, the 3 16 is fine. I've seen other videos where this uh, brand of beadlocks I've got, where the the, uh, the beadlock actually fit down into here. And I expected that to happen, but it didn't, and I'm okay with that. I'm gonna, I probably could have ground a little off and got it to fit in there, but I want, really wanted to get as much width as I could out of these. All right, got the original valve stem hole welded up. Inner beadlock ring is stuck on there with several tack welds around the diameter. There it is, all grinded up. Let me know in the comments who I'm imitating. Uh, basically all I did, I'm not trying to make it look pretty because it's going to be hidden by the tire anyway. I just took down any high spots here that might, because you still need to get this face of this wheel inside the bead. This is the one you're working with on the back side. So yeah, I just kind of took down any high spots around here. Uh, so far, the other two rims that I've already mounted up, they, they went in nice and easy. So yeah, I didn't get too carried away. And I did find that there was a couple of spots I had to had to run two beads. I don't know what, my vision or something, or maybe I'm loopy from breathing all the fumes coming off of those bolts I welded. But, uh, um, the uh, anti-coning ring here, what you do is you put your crescent wrench on there. I can't do this, you know, with one hand. I'm just, and uh, you you bend it up, move over to the side, bend up a little more, keep moving back and forth till you have this this lip here bent up 90 degrees, like that, roughly. I'll show you when I get one done, or all of them. And then yeah, you uh, you go ahead and uh, weld it along there. I've been welding it along here and on the back side. There they are. All bent up 90 degrees. You get the idea. I'm guessing what that does is that's rigidity to the ring. Keeps it from coning out when you tighten down all your beadlock bolts. Uh, works out kind of perfect with these uh, tires I've got. The bead thickness is almost the perfect thickness with that anti-coning ring. For me, I don't want to touch that, it's still hot from welding. <laughs> and it works out to where my bolts tighten down just the right amount, and it squeezes the bead down just amount, the right amount to match this anti-coning ring. I don't know if that's a design element or if the little flange is there just to keep it from bending, but it works out pretty good for me on my setup. All welded up, inside, yeah. Those don't look that great they're kind of hard to get to. But, uh, yeah, inside and out. It took me 35 minutes to weld that beadlock on, bend the flanges out and weld those. So that wasn't bad at all. That included all the grinding and cleaning on the rim. I know, I know, you want to 
see. I want to see. I want to see. That's why you need to get the get it up on a bucket. You want the weight of the tire here pushing down on the rim right in here. So when you first start these on here, more than likely you're going to have to use three or four bolts that are uh, longer than the ones you're actually going to use just in order to get the ring sucked down enough to get the actual bolts you're going to use on there. There you go, got the four longer bolts in, got them sucked down. Should be able to run my inch and a half grade eights now. Yep, should be able to get them started. And at this point, you know, this ain't rocket science. Just put them all in and uh, keep going around and around and around to get them all tight, evenly tight. I'm not going to waste your time by filming this and even fast forwarding it. That's just, that's just dumb. You deserve better than that. Okay, they're all started. And you're even going to want to take those long bolts out and replace them so you can use them with your other three wheels. Uh, at this point, kind of like putting the bolts in the tires themselves, you want to get comfortable because you're going to be doing this a while. Uh, just keep snugging them down more and more and more. I suppose you could jump around in a crisscross pattern, but I just kind of go around because like I said before, these have kind of worked out good with that anti-coning flange butts up against the outer beadlock rim or outer beadlock ring and that seems to be just about well that is about right it's bottomed out and that's all you can do and that seems to be just about perfect for the thickness of the bead of these particular thorn birds all right they're all tightened down uh, let's put some air in it i'm sure the camera didn't pick it up but the, these outer rings they did cone or deflect a little bit but yeah that's probably my own fault i should have maybe Got the quarter engines, but am I really concerned about it? Not really. It'll be fine. Um, now, uh, like I said, this is the first time I've done this, but because I've compromised the carcass of the tire by drilling so many holes in it, I'm concerned about putting so much air in it that the thing could explode because of all that damage. So I would recommend if you're going to do this, Make damn sure you lube up the back side of this rim so it seats as easily as possible. So far the other two I've done, they seated with maybe eight or nine pounds of pressure. It's been fine. And that's probably about how much pressure I'm gonna run in it when actually wheeling. This is, I don't know what it is, I got it local one of the local hardware stores, Tyson's, and uh, it comes in like a, a little plastic envelope that you cut open. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be for working on tires. And you cut that little package open, put it in a one gallon container, and put water in it. And so far, it seems to work pretty good other than you know, get your hands all slippery. this sloppy writing it took 40 minutes to drill the tire two hours 35 minutes to put all the bolts in bolts and nuts 50 minutes to weld all those nuts onto the bolts 35 minutes to weld the beadlock onto the rim and 45 minutes to mount up the tire put the outer beadlock ring on and air it up um, I didn't count the time it took to spray paint the outer ring as you noticed I didn't even paint the inner ring I mean, how long does it take to paint an outer ring? Longer time it took was let it sit around and dry. But uh, yeah, there you go, five and three quarter hours for each one of these tires. Like I said before, this this has been tedious and a lot more expensive than I thought it was going to be. If, if I knew now what I did back when I come up with this idea, I would say forget it. It is not worth it. Hopefully they will be worth it, but my God, the amount of money and time I've got in these and and it's, they're going to be so damn heavy. I don't know, they're going to 
they're going to tear something up, whether it be the trails or the rig that they're on. But, uh, I'm going to get this last one mounted up, and uh, I don't think I'll have time today to get them wrestled onto the rig. But Okay, it's the day after wheeling. Uh, I know I said I was going to try to get some footage of these things wheeling, and that was ever my intention, but it didn't work out that way. Um, they did absolutely freaking awesome for about an hour, and then one of them went flat. Uh, I wanted to, yeah, get feel them out a little bit, and then I was going to start taking some video when we got to some really challenging stuff. And yeah, the one went flat. Um, I don't know what happened. Um, tube, obviously. Yeah, I knew they were done for. I knew I was going to have to go back to camp. I brought my little tractor tires along to put back on it. And we tried putting air in the one. It really wouldn't take hardly any. So I limped it back to the campground area. We put the tractor tires on it. And even though those tractor tires have always been great in the past, it just seemed like they sucked after that. But uh, in the process of uh, changing them out, the other, one other tire was going flat too. And boy, getting them on the trailer afterwards was a bear. It took three of us with all that mud packed in them. I mean, they felt like they were full of water. One of them might be the one that went flat because I had to drive through a couple pretty good mud holes to get out. But uh, Yeah, I'm not even going to mess with them. I'm just going to fire up the loader and pick them up and go dump them somewhere until all that mud dries out and I can it'll fall out of there on its own then I'll break them open and see what's going on in there and make some adjustments from there I might have to come up with some sort of a liner that goes between the tube and the, the bolt heads 